Necrosis refers to a death of cell or group of cells in a living organism. It develops in a situation in which an insult exceeds compensatory mechanisms of the damaged cell and represents the most severe form of cell regression. There are several morphologically distinct patterns of necrosis. In this video, we'll discuss coagulative necrosis. Coagulative necrosis usually develops in tissues rich in proteins. In this type of necrosis, the affected tissue preserves its original architecture at least for a few days. The probable underlying mechanism is that the insult damages not only structural proteins of the cells, but also their enzymes, which blocks the subsequent autolytic process. As a result, the necrotic cells preserve their original shape until they are finally heterolyzed by enzymes from surrounding inflammatory cells and engulfed by macrophages. Grossly, the coagulative necrosis is whitish or yellowish, firm and dry. Please keep in mind that the term coagulative is by no means related to blood clotting, which is also called hemocoagulation. It's simply an old and a bit inaccurate macroscopic description of the necrotic tissue that looks condensed. Coagulative necrosis often develops as a consequence of ischemia. Such necrosis caused by impaired blood supply is called an infarction. Its shape reflects a region supplied by its respective arterial branch. Therefore, it's often wedge shape, widening towards the periphery. On the serous surface of the affected organ, there is often a reactive fibrinous inflammation. In this picture, you can see a myocardial infarction. Cardiomyocytes are necrotic with the loss of stainable nuclei and increased eosinophilia of the cytoplasm. Here, we can see earlier stages of necrosis. The nuclei are still at least partially preserved, but the cytoplasm is a little bit more eosinophilic, loses cross striation, and the cells are a bit waved. Coagulative necrosis usually heals by a scar. In the first phase, granulation tissue starts to grow into the necrotic tissue from the periphery. The granulation tissue is, in fact, a loose and edematous fibrous tissue rich in capillaries. In the course of the time, the granulation tissue completely replaces the necrotic focus. In the picture, you can appreciate an older myocardial infarction replaced by a fresh edematous and still a quiet vascular scar. Later on, the fresh scar will be replaced by a definite, more compact and collagenous scar. Sometimes you can come across the term simple necrosis. Simple necrosis represents necrosis of an individual compartment of the tissue. It may appear as a precursor of coagulative necrosis in case of less severe injury. A typical example is isolated necrosis of epidermis in a patient with combustions of a milder degree. In some instances, necrosis of individual tissue compartment is permanent because some chemical substances may be harmful only to a specific cell type. Such necrosis is called selective. A typical example is necrosis of renal proximal tubular epithelial cells in patients with corrosive sublimate poisoning. Finally, we should briefly mention Zanker vaccine necrosis. It's an old and inaccurate term, since the process represents rather a degeneration than a true necrosis. This process affects skeletal muscles, such as diaphragm or rectus abdominis in patients with severe toxemia, for example in typhoid fever. Grossly, the muscles are darker, fragile, and look boiled. Microscopically, muscle fibers are edematous, loose cross striations, and their cytoplasm has a hyaline appearance. Later on, the process may progress into coagulative necrosis.